<clears throat> Three, two, one. Today on Wood Turning, we're going to make an old school mic. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools, best in class carbide wood turning tools. This is kind of a passion project for Brian and myself. Our, we have a good friend, Sam Jones, who's a broadcast legend in Oklahoma. And he has this extensive microphone collection and he's been asking us for years, can you make me a mic? So this is what we're making today. We're making a somewhat replica of a RCA 77DX microphone. This is from back in the 50s, even before that. And it was one of the best mics on the market and Sam has one in his collection and he will never bring it up from behind the glass he likes it so much but anyway this is made of several really cool types of wood so let's get on the lathe and start turning the top of the mic so before we get going i do want to thank our sponsors robust lays and easywood tools without their support we wouldn't be here and that would be no fun for you or me right so the first thing i want to do is i'm going to turn a piece of lacewood now what is lacewood well lacewood could be several varieties of wood but what it is is quarter sawn instead of going with the grain you kind of go quarter-wise with it. And what it does, it reveals this really cool pattern amongst the hard and the soft parts of the grain and the wood. So as you turn it around, you go, you see the patterns like that. And even back here it gets more, it has a chatoyance to it. I don't know if that's showing up right now. But anyway, I wanted to do that because when I looked online to see this microphone, look at all the little holes in the top of that screen. Well, there is no way I was going to drill 340 holes just for this project. <laughs> so I had to look for the next best thing, a piece of wood like this. My wife suggested using a Banksia pod, which had been a great idea, but I don't think I could find one fat enough to do the thing that we wanted to do and make it the size I wanted to make it. But anyway, so I have my lace wood on here, and speaking of size, you can see there's a seam here right now. I couldn't find this very thick, so I had to glue up two pieces to make this big enough for the project. So this is about five inches long, and it's about two and a half inches wide. So what we're going to do is round it out for the first step. It's always the first step, isn't it? Rounding is what we always do. It's what we do. So you can see the end of the microphone is a big old bead. And now that we have this rounded out, roughed out, I'm going to make a bead on the end of this piece of wood. And a bead is just that movement. You just kind of move your body into the turn. Just sneak up on it. You don't take it fast. I do want to make my bead end about here though because I've got the point going into the end of the microphone right now. So I've got to get deep enough that I don't have that showing. Make sure when you turn this piece that the diameter is the same all the way down. Doesn't matter really what the diameter is, the scale is up to you. I'm at about two and a half inches right here and all I'm going to do later is make everything else proportional to it as I'm turning the other parts. So we'll keep sneaking up on the bead to get done with this piece. So we're rounded out, we're sanded, I've got the dome on here, I've left a little bit of wood and we're going to nip that off on the bandsaw. And the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my ruler here and I want three and a quarter from here up to here. So this is going to be three and one quarter inches long and all we're going to do is make a mark, a parting mark here. And then we don't have to go deep because then I will also take this to the bandsaw and nip the rest of this wood off. There you go. Save that piece though, you can use it for something later. So our bottom wood is Bacote. Bacote? I don't know how to say it right. But anyway, it's a very heavy, dense wood. I love this stuff. It's cool. It also helps this thing swing down, which is really cool. Uh, I already went ahead and rounded out a blank. It's about seven inches long and probably about three inches wide. And I put a tenon on it, so we're holding it here. I transferred over the diameter 
of the microphone top because this is going to inset in here about a quarter of an inch. So all I want to do is hollow that out. It's going to take a little bit of a try and fit, try and fit once I get to that point to get it to where it fits tight. I want almost a jam fit because I don't want a seam between the two parts. So now that we have this fitted, this fitted, that fitted, we need 5 8 inch bands here and rather than take time to measure it out, I'm going to go ahead and cheat off of this one because we have one band, two bands and then the base, right? Well this is actually part of this wood, this is inlay. So we're going to go into here and cut a groove and glue some inlay in. So how do you get a perfect piece of veneer to wrap around here? You use a paper cutter. One thing you have to make sure of is, is that your veneer, you put it in orientation to where it wants to bend. Not, not like this, it doesn't want to bend this way, you got to have it this way. And then you measure off whatever size you need, you think you need, and it's 5 8 here, and I'm just doing this to show you, so we'll waste a little bit, and you just go, and the paper cutter makes a perfect cut and it allows you to wrap that right there. So I am fitting the strip here of veneer to the hole, or the, to my parting out at hole. See, that's a really nice tight fit. I found out it's a lot easier to make this fit this than try to cut this to fit that. So that's the order you want to go in. Now that we're there, we're going to add some glue. Now, this is one of those steps that you can only do once. <laughs> so I'm taking some thick cyanoacrylate glue and I'm being liberal with it. So we're gonna have a heck of a smell here in a minute when it dries. Wish I could share that with you. So I've got that on there. Now I'm taking just a flux welding brush and I'm going to quickly spread this to where I have good contact all the way edge to edge. So I'm treating this almost like you would like a tight bond or something. So now what we wanna do is I want to find, this is going to be the back. And let's see if I got the right piece here. So I'm going to put this on here and we're just going to slide this in and roll it around and hold it until it gets all the way over to here <laughs> as it's coming up. So then I'm going to put pressure on here until it decides to dry in. Once that's dry, I'm going to trim off the excess there. <laughs> then hopefully I'm not going to be glued to it. So I went ahead and sanded everything down now and it's sitting nice and flush. But if you wind up with a little bit of a gap on your uh, band right here, you can fix it this way. And I'm doing this because I like the look of it. I'm gonna take my skew in here and just come right in on that edge and mark it, just going a little bit. Come over here, do the same thing on the other side. It's a very gentle push right there. You can kind of hear that veneer. Now, the cool thing is, I'm going to get a burning wire and I'm going to burn marks in there so we see a nice delineation. Make sure your burning wire has handles on it. Don't ever wrap this around your finger or you'll be like that. <laughs> Whoa, I heard a power hit. We got a storm coming in. Anyway, my uh, American Beauty lathe has a nice 25 inch swing so I can easily throw this under here and have a lot of room. By the way, I use things that I really like, and I'm also like this one so much, I am a dealer. <laughs> anyway, I'm raising up on there. See, smoke, smoke in a shop. That is a fun thing to have. So now, what I've done is I've made a great black mark on there so you can see the delineation of that. Don't grab this wire by the, the wire right now at this point. It's pretty hot. <laughs> so, next thing to do is we're just gonna make the bead like we did for the top of the mic. good. <laughs> what I'm working on right now are the knobs that hold the mic onto the stand. I'm getting dust on everything here. Let me pull this off and hopefully it won't fall apart. But anyway, that's the knob. So it's ebony. 
and I've got to put a finish on here to get that to clean up a bit. But anyway, that inserts into a hole here, and then this knob looks pretty cool here. I actually used a couple uh, faucet washers to fill this out, which I thought was neat. But anyway, the hole I'm drilling is nine thirty seconds of an inch, so I drilled myself a test piece of wood here, and I can just bring it up and then just see how it fits. And if it goes on nice and tight, that's pretty good. Whoops, <laughs> didn't mean to hit the camera. But um, so that's my size. Now I just want to make the ear, I guess the part you turn with your hand, just a little bit, um, probably about, I don't know, quarter, not quarter inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch like so. So all you do is you come down here like so, and I'm going to go ahead and part it off in a second, but I'm going to sand that. Then we'll make part it off, make another one, sand that. And then we'll be ready to move on to making the base. So now we need to make the base and the stem. So the stem is pretty simple. It is going to be just like the little handles we made, the knobs. It's got a tenon on this end, and I've already turned that to diameter. And I'm doing about, I don't know, half inch relief right here. And so you just want to part down a little bit like that. And then really all you do is you just work your way all the way back and you're going to leave a relief or like that on that end so you got matching ends. It looks really good. A little bit of sanding and then you move on to the base. So this is the bottom of the stand and I'm just wanting to leave a nice little surprise here for somebody. I'm going to go out here and make this mark. It's a lot easier to center a mark uh, by going both sides in the middle. This is the Easy Woods uh, little point tool. I love it for stuff like this. So there we go like that. That's cool. So anyway, when somebody turns that stand over, it's like, hey, look, that guy went to all that trouble to do that. You know, a little bit of sandpaper here, just take any edges off. Okie dokie. Now, by the way, how am I holding that on there? Magic, right? No, it's a jam chuck, actually. Let me see if I can twist it off of here. <laughs> Come on. There we go. It is a real jam fit. So. This is the same diameter as my drill bit that drilled the hole through here. So when it jams on there, it holds it nice and tight. So now we push it back onto here. And for safety, I'm going to bring my tailstock up. And with my robust live center, they have a cone center on it. Cone center is great for centering back into another hole like so. So anyway, now I'm going to start working on the top of the base and just make a nice curve and I want to leave a flat there that will accommodate the stem as you can see when it comes down like so. So that's just a little bit of quick turning and then we'll be ready for some metal work. <laughs> So I'm using my zero centered ruler. This is actually 13 inches, so this works perfectly. So there is the center of my bar. So what are we doing with our metal working here? We're trying to make this thingy, which holds the microphone. <laughs> it's not easy. So I actually wound up going to uh, Lowe's and I bought some half inch aluminum bar stock, which is really nice. It doesn't cost that much. It's a lot better than the uh, hacksaw blades I kept trying to bend to make this thing and they kept snapping. So I didn't not a metal worker so the only way I could approach this was I had to find a piece of metal or something hard that had the right curve to it that I wanted right so I'm not gonna make you watch all of this because it won't happen that quickly but I simply put this on here kind of centered it up and at equal pressure on each side and I bend it through and it follows that curve if you don't get this curve right you're in a world of hurt trying to get everything else to match up. Like I said, <laughs> don't watch. I'll get this done in a minute. <laughs> now that I have the bend where I want it, I've already drilled holes in the ends when it was flat, but I have to drill a hole in the center now. So I have a heat resistant glove on here just in case it gets a little hot. And then once I drill this, I want to actually bevel the top of this so my screw will sit flush with the metal. So the metal working kind of worked out. It's swinging good. And again, like I said, these are rubber washers, uh, plumbing washers to give us the spacers. They look like ebony, which is pretty cool. And I have the hole drilled here. So this is holding that on now. I put a screw straight in there. Put this into the base. 
into the base. There we go. Now it's all together. So that is how you make an old school microphone. So until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools, best in class carbide wood turning tools.